And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hookup right next to Fisherman's Landing in San Diego here, enjoying a beautiful morning in Southern California with Mr. Scott Sherman from Snap Insurance. He also happens to be a city councilman here in San Diego, too. So we'll be talking all kinds of good stuff. Parker, boat owner, and more. Stay tuned. Southern California Sports Fishing Voices. Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and radio network. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone, whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a sport boat. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use this special code to save $20 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. We all need to get around, but we all need something different from our vehicles. Your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered if you're looking for a new truck this month. Plus, it's SUV season, so they have great deals for everyone. Whether it's a new Echo Sport that is nimble and fun around town, or the Ford Explorer that is capable of putting a boat in the water and has seating for seven, Ford has you covered. Ford trucks and SUVs aren't just powerful and legendary. They have the latest technology that helps you seamlessly connect your smartphone and ensure you're safe on the road. Features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on trucks are truly a game changer at the ramp, helping you back up a trailer by simply turning a knob on the dash and doing the hard work for you. So check out all the great deals during SUV season and save some money on the right gear for you. Learn more at buyfordnow.com or visit your San Diego County Ford dealers today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. What a great show today, man. I always like talking to Sherm. I always love when Sherm's on because Sherm is, Sherm is my boat guy. You know what I mean? Like similar boat, loves tuna fishing, doing that kind of thing. So this is going to be a great time and... Certainly looking forward to that and looking forward to talking some snap insurance and having a good time this morning. Indeed. Good morning, Scott Sherman. Morning, guys. What's up, Sherman? All good, right. Good to be here in the headquarters. Yeah. So, uh, of course, you spend time uh, with your wife working with snap insurance, and then you also spend a little time on the city council, too, right? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that had to be a real easy gig the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's too funny. I remember when I first started running for office, you know, eight plus years ago, everybody said, oh, it gets much easier when you get in office because you're working so hard campaigning. And it's still 12, 13 hour days sure. most of the time. Jeez, that's crazy. And even in today's world where you're not actually face to face, you're still it's, Zoom meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's it's different now. That That's for sure. You, it's difficult to have council meetings when people aren't there in the audience I'm and sure. doing their talking and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's taken us a while to get to the technology curve, but we're getting it handled pretty good. And you're still getting business done. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. a lot of things. A lot of, especially with everything going on now, trying to coerce and, and coax elected officials to open things up sooner rather than later and to, to yeah. move at a quicker pace. And how's that going? <laughs> <laughs> see, see this flat spot on my forehead? Yeah. <laughs> I just can't imagine. Sherm is such a... Yeah. Uh, just a... 
a common sense person and like there's sometimes seems to be so little of that in that arena and yeah. i just can't imagine it, you're one of us yeah you're a regular good small business fishing guy well, and like i tried to stay that way you, you know? have yeah. and i just can't yeah. imagine you having to operate in that world it's got to be brutal but thank god you are man well we when i first got to City Hall, we had a sign made for my office, and it says City of San Diego, District 7. It has the emblem, you know, of the city. And right underneath that, it says Department of Common Sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind Which of what we Which is true. It is, but it is tough to bring it down there. I mean, even just look about when they were trying, when I was trying to get them to open up the waterways. Yeah. And I kept trying to tell them, what's the difference between my wife and I stuck in our house or my wife and I on the boat out in the open air? What's the difference? It's safer. Yeah. Frankly, yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But they don't get that, right? No. Well, you, you have. They finally you, did. You have. Yeah. But you have bureaucrats who always plan for the worst case scenario. Right. Uh, you know, what if the what if the sun doesn't come up tomorrow? What can we do? You yeah. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then you have politicians who are worried about being blamed for something. Yeah. So it's a double edged sword, and the common sense kind of goes out the door because you have bureaucrats who don't want to have anything happen and politicians don't want to be blamed. Yeah, if they open it up, I'll get blamed and yeah. I'm the one of that I don't sure. want that burden. Well, you know, it's, the, it's kind of it's the mayor's fault or the council's fault because they open things back up and now we have more cases. And yeah. their, you, know. you know, their intention comes from a good place at keeping people safe, but sometimes the common sense goes out the window with that. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. So what you're saying is you have broader shoulders than most of the politicians <laughs> here in the county, right? Well, I have another job, so it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this isn't my only gig, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Indeed, for sure. So now on your other job, um, snap insurance. Yep. Let's talk about insurance, yep. boat insurance. Okay, there's important uh, subject. Yeah, important subject. Um, you guys d deal with pretty much any any kind of boat. Like you have yeah. a Parker boat, a twenty five foot Parker yep. that you have from West Coast Marine and yeah, cabin and, up there. And we can insure you know from your six pack charters all the way to. Your, your little dinghy you take out every once in a while to go lobstering, you know, that kind of thing. So you'll do commercial. So that's a good question. A lot of guys during this thing got a commercial license. they are uh, become commercial fishermen instead of sport fishermen. Um, do they need different insurance for that? That's um, a great question. If you're just doing commercial work on there, it's usually just without taking passengers. Without passengers. If you're doing that, you can usually get a... a attachment to the policy that allows for that type of thing okay they may charge you a little more because they figure you're on the water more there's sure. more chance for something to happen maybe you're doing a your the, duty the, is a little more difficult than it would right. be if you were just recreationally doing it but if you're actually taking passengers out then it becomes a different policy altogether a okay. diff totally different totally policy. different policy yeah so if you are actively let's just have this in our if you have a commercial fishing like fishing game commercial license but mm -hmm. you don't actually sell fish you're just doing pleasure boating you don't need that you should be fine i mean yeah. it's always good to check because different carriers sometimes have different ways of looking at things but it, for the most part you're not going to have a problem not an issue right? yeah so what type of insurance do you need on your boat well first thing you need to do is cover the boat trailer if you have it and any liability that you may cause while you're there and, you know you run into somebody you hit a skier you crash into a dock you do all those kinds of things anything like that you need to have covered so that's what you want to do and then there's things you don't think about, you know, mechanical breakdown, right. tackle coverage, you know, all those kinds of things that can really add up, but you're not really thinking about. That was one of my favorite things you talked about last time we were on there is, you know, I mean, a, a traditional non shopped around boat insurance policy probably offers very <clears throat> little in the way of fishing tackle and things like that. And when you were on, you, you know, you started thinking about it. We, we were talking about before the show starts, like you just don't realize how much money you have wrapped up into your lifetime you know career of assembling all your fishing tackle i mean a couple trinidads and a couple talicas and the rods that go with them and a nice pair of binoculars you know you wrap up 10 grand at the snap of a finger not realize it because you know you bought those over the last you know five ten years but you just don't sit there and realize like this is a lot of money you're talking about and yeah and it reminds me it kind of hit that hit home with me is many years ago i forgot to lock the back of my you know my pickup and somebody reached in and took my tackle box so I had to go down and rebuild from scratch oh, yeah. everything that was in that tackle box. And before I was done, I was looking just for that tackle box, about 4800 bucks yep. worth of stuff. Whoa. I do, I do those for guys all the time for that exact same thing. Some, you know, man, I got stolen insurance claim, and we'll just kind of sit down and start thinking about it. I mean, spool fluorocarbon are, you know, 25 to 50 bucks a piece, and right. all of us have a 25 a 40 a 50 a 60 and a 100 and 
you know, and your your jigs are ten fifteen bucks a piece now, and your sure. hook pa- it just it just adds up so adds fast. Up. Well, you look at trolling lures and sure. casting jigs and all your fluorocarbon leaders, everything else. It adds up amazingly fast. And most policies, they give you either twenty five hundred or five thousand dollars for all of your tackle. And so, what should you have? Uh, it's up to you to know exactly what you have and what the like. If you're a well equipped boat, if I was a well equipped boat, I'd bump it up to about twenty five if they let if the if the company would let you. Sometimes oh, okay. sometimes they have issues. Yeah, sure, like a percentage or something. Yeah, because like I mean, if I look at the stuff on my boat, you know, you're talking a couple of kite rigs and stuff all the way down to bass rods and everything mm-hmm. else. Once you start looking at yeah. The cost of all that, Looking plus all your tackle and everything else, it's a lot of money. Yeah, especially if you, you know, if you were going out to replace it in one shot. You know, that's right. the thing. Like we didn't, we didn't buy it that way. You got our rod here, and you got this reel, and then this reel became the reel for that rod, and vice versa. And, and we we do it bit by bit. But if you had to take all of your gear that goes on your boat and it all go away, and then you rebuy it all in one shot, the number is it's staggering. I mean, yeah. and I only know that because I, you know, unfortunately, have had to help plenty of people with insurance type scenarios over the years at the shop. But it is. It, it is it is it takes your breath away You're like there's no way there's no right. way i had that much in there and it just adds up it adds up very quickly so um so when, when you had your tackle box stolen out of your truck is that covered by your boat policy or by your homeowner's policy? that actually would be a, a homeowner's policy homeowner's claim because it was in the now if it was in the boat and stolen then it's a boat policy it's a boat policy right. it has gotcha. to be on the boat right yeah all right so what other types of insurance do you need on your boat? Um, you also need to think about personal property because we were talking about tackle and you are mentioning the, the binoculars and sure. gyros and you know those are five, six grand for a good pair and sometimes a couple of people have two on there. That's usually covered under your personal property because that's not tackle so you want to make sure you have enough there to cover that on your boat oh, as well. Oh, it's, it's not tackle so it's personal property. Right, right. Okay. Is there a differentiation in boat policies? Yeah, some are a little bit different how they look at it. Binos and anything that you can take with you that's not actually attached to the to the boat itself. So say you have a radio that can be disconnected and take with you, or you've got a fish finder or some kind of electronics. Anything that can be detached and taken with you, you need to category that as personal property. Ah, okay. That's a, that's a very good point. Now, if it's attached to the hull or it's permanently affixed, then that's part of the actual hull coverage altogether. Well, true. Okay. Okay. So, so, so tackle could be personal property. No, tackle is a separate coverage altogether. It's totally separate. Right. So they write that in a boat policy. They write that as a. Yep, tackle is a coverage. Personal property is a coverage. How do you how do you document all this? How do you how do you, That's okay? A good I get sure. I get a I get a loss. On somebody breaks into the boat, steals a bunch of stuff. How do you document it? Um, have I recommend people have photos of whatever they have. Okay. And it's super easy today with all the yeah. storage of electronic sure. pictures and those types of things you know yeah. take a picture of your dash take a picture of your binoculars take a picture and just keep it in a file yeah that's a yeah. good call yeah a- every one of us has a phone that could super easy take a little video walking through your whole boat and yeah everything you got you and, know? and it shows everything you, you have. can do it right now and be done you know in 10 and, minutes you know it's different nowadays when i first started it was polaroids and those that's kind funny. of things yeah. but, you know, <laughs> now you can have a picture of a guy's dash and you can zoom all the way in to find out the serial numbers and everything sure. what type of make and model and everything it is so it's it's easy to do and it's invaluable when it comes time to replacing things i yeah. always think that that you know we, we have talked about it before but that's why you you know that's why you deal with uh, you know a sherman that's why you deal with somebody at snap insurance because they're thinking of things like that for you and i, yeah, I you wouldn't, wouldn't take it I, like absolutely that. not i mean yeah. I, I know that i need insurance for the boat what's cheap price oh that one's cheap perfect here we go and, right and then god forbid when something happens and you need it then that's where having somebody that is a boater and knows about things like that and realizes that tackle does cost that much and realizes that binoculars aren't going to be covered, so you need to make sure you go with this policy. Like, or we haven't even got into coverage in in Mexican waters. There you go. You know, I mean, that's a whole. So many policies exclude coverage in Mexican waters, and a lot of times, you'll get guys will go online and, like you said, they'll put in a basic information. Yeah. Hit the button to see where code is. There's the cheapest one. Totally. You know, I'm going there. Yep. But, you know, I can get you a real cheap policy. It won't cover much, but I can get you a real cheap <laughs> yeah. policy. Yeah, look at the policy. It's, it, it, Have it, to. Figure yeah. out whether it's a bargain or not. Yeah, I mean, S- saving 20 bucks might cost you a whole lot of money. Yeah, imagine if you're at the Coronado Islands or something, you bang into the rocks and you have to limp home. You've got a big gash in your hull that might be above the waterline so you don't sink, but, you know, you've got a lot of damage. It's not covered. You oh, were, that's wild. You were in Mexico. Oh, unless you have Mexico coverage on your policy. Unless you have... Sure. To coverage on yeah. your policy. Yeah. So, um, 
How do you check that? How do you know where your policy covers? Well, there's declarations pages that shows where things are. You, you really have to read the entire policy. Like, or if you have the, a good agent, just call your agent and ask yeah, him. Yeah, like a lot of policies will cover to Punta Eugenia, which is down yeah, south uh, of Enchilada, right? Yeah, I mean, there's some that cover, you know, 25 miles from the coast down to Rio Santo Tomas. Yeah. You know, that's usually, some will give you an actual parallel number of, of where to, the coverage ends. Then you can get riders on it and extensions that will take you all the way down to, to Cabo and, and points south, where you can get worldwide depending on the size of the vessel. Yeah. Depend, like if you're taking your boat to Cabo, you need to have special insurance. Or you get a rider on your you, current you get it, Yeah, you either have it there or you get an attachment that will allow you to go th there. And then even then, you have to know what's going on because there will be months that will be excluded right. because of hurricane, hurricane season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's complex. That's why you need SNAP insurance, Scott Sherman, somebody that knows the ins and outs. That's an actual fisherman. <laughs> but it exactly. it helps to have somebody who's writing boat insurance who's a boater and a fisherman. So, yeah. you know, it's... It's huge. It, it just... It even goes back to politics. So many times people are making decisions who have no experience in that field whatsoever. Yeah. And then you don't want somebody who's really good at writing homeowner's insurance doing your boat policy because they don't know everything that you need to have on sure. a boat policy. They right. don't know the questions to ask you, much less you don't know the questions to ask them. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. As you can hear, we have a great show lined up for today. A lot to talk about, a lot of insurance. We haven't even entered into uh, Sherm's... Uh, Avid fishing uh, addiction, shall we say, <laughs> on his uh, Parker 25. Only since I was five years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we haven't even started there and all the fish that he's caught and such like that. So you want to get through great day today? Yeah, no doubt. This is going to be a great show. Lots of good information. You know, talk about a full, well-rounded guy, like say private boater and buddy and fisherman and insurance and councilman and the whole nine. Going to be a great show. Lots of great info coming. If you want to join us, we want to hear from you. Give us a call this morning at 833 833- Two eight eight zero nine seven three. Again, eight three three two eight eight zero nine seven three. That's your chance to give us a call. Let's talk hookup this morning. Not only are you going to get an opportunity to talk to Scott Sherman from Snap Insurance, you're also going to get a really killer prize. One lucky caller at the end of the show today is going to win a full day trip on board the San Diego out of Sea Force Sport Fishing and. We're hoping that that trip is going to go very soon, and yeah. hopefully you'll get your hopefully opportunity. Next week. Exactly. <laughs> you'll get your opportunity to fish with Captain Ryan Boston and the boys and a great time at Seaforth. Again, 833-288-0973. And when we come back, we're going to be taking those phone calls. Lots of great info coming your way. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. This is Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and radio network. One of the dream trips for most anglers is Alaska. There are so many lodges, how do you make a choice? It's easy. Choose the one most Let's Talk Hookup listeners return to time after time. Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, and the finest charter captains in Sitka. All for the ultimate value. One visit and you will understand why nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. Sitka is famous for some of the best runs of salmon in Alaska. And if giant Alaskan halibut is your target, the expert captains at Kingfisher Charters know the hot spots and can put you on a fish of a lifetime. Plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod are there too. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except tips. It is truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727 6136 or check kingfisherchargers.com. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. You know, the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate, it's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying, where everyone knows your name. Well, truly at Ranch Lanero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guests' names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Ranch Lanero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-225. 1-800-646-BAHA and RanchoLeonero.com. I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Leonero.
Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. This program is paid for by Let's Talk Hookup. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Phones are getting packed up this morning. Again, if you want to get through, 833-288-0973. Yeah, and again, uh, like I say, you go into a queue. If you just call, just hang in there. You'll hear silence, and uh, you'll be next up on the queue, and Dave will be taking your phone call as well as running the board and doing everything at it. the studio. So, Very busy man. Uh, be patient, for sure. Let's go and jump into it, Rick. Sounds good, buddy. Why don't we start it off this morning with Mark. Mark's calling us from Santee. Good morning, Mark. Thanks for joining us here and getting us started on Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I got a question for Scott. Um, if I have, you know, I've got insurance now, but I want to switch over, could I come in or do we do it over the phone? Like, you know, in today, in, you know, especially today with all this Corona garbage. Yeah, um, co- uh, good question. Thank you. And um, coming in right now is by appointment only kind of thing. The, the best thing to do is call the office. Usually ask for Kimberly when it comes to boat issues, and then she can take care of that right away and she's very good at yeah, it. Yeah, she does she does a great job. Right, right. Yeah, but, so you have a specialist for the boat yeah, policies. Yeah. Someone yeah. that I you know who has been doing it for a while, knows the questions to ask, yeah. you know, has had me at her side saying, Okay, these are the important things that you need to contact yeah. and ask them and, and she's very good at it and very proficient. At six one nine nine oh eight thirty one hundred. That's okay. Snap Insurance. Snap insurance. Yeah. And uh, on the web it's snapinsurance.com. Uh Snap Associates. Snap Associates right. right. Okay. Yeah. You can link that through the Let's Talk Hookup website on our links page. You yeah, can. and then make sure you always reference the show whenever you do okay. either, you know, call in or, or send an email, that type of thing. Because okay. then that way we, we know that uh it's part of the show and these guys are serious fishermen part of the and, family well part of the family but it also lets us know that they're serious fishermen so we need to tailor their boat policy towards that okay that's a that's a good way Because sometimes you get the boat policy who calls in and you know their sure. family who goes out towing their tube every, around every yeah once they a while. tow the tube around every once in a while they may take the kids out in the bay and they're not that serious about it so then you you know that it, okay you don't need x y and z because that's more tailored towards the hardcore fishermen right a lot of people call me and say, does SNAP insurance do uh, Mexican insurance? Do you do that? Yeah, my wife, uh, Norma, actually is the expert on, on Mexican insurance, and okay. she can set that up super easy. Now, again, with everything going on, not a lot of people travel into Mexico, yeah. but yeah. It, she can take care of that. She's fluent in Spanish. Okay. Actually used to work for some of the Mexican insurance companies oh. in, in the claims area, so she knows the ins and out of it oh, very well. knows how to play yeah. that game. You're talking about just, you know, you're going to go down Ensenada for the weekend, right. make sure you have coverage on the car and yourself, that, that kind of That, that kind, kind of thing. thing, or towing your boat down there, oh, sure, or sure. traveling Homeowners, your boat down there. Homeowners, you know, home policies for your, some, oh. some of those people have second homes down in Mexico. Oh, you, okay. you, you guys do everything. You guys do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Norma knows how to how to do that, that. She, she knows the ins and outs very, very well. Yeah, yeah. that's good stuff. That's cool. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. All right. And that that is, you know, you can buy just on the daily or you can probably get it for the year, I would yeah. guess, too. Like yeah. if you're, you know, you make one or two trips down to the, you know, Hotel Coral and Ensenada, you know, a couple times a year, you might get a, a you know, a one-timer. Or if that's your thing, you get one for the year and then you don't have to worry about, you know, getting it each time. Yeah, and, you get, and, and she has clients that, you know, travel into Mexico frequently, so they carry annual policies. Okay. Just like you would here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. All right. Yeah. I dig it. All right. Well, let's jump back into the phones. How about we talk to Dennis? Dennis called us from San Diego this morning. What's up, Dennis? Welcome to the show. Well, guys, it's my birthday. Hey. Happy I birthday, had to Dennis. call in. Um, I wanted to ask this gentleman. Um, I've been saving my money to try and buy a kayak. It's going to be a used one. Um, but I want to know if you insure those. And if so, do I have to, like this other guy said, do I have to buy additional insurance if i go across the border and other issues i may have because it's gonna it's gonna be loaded in a truck so right. i don't know how that would work if it go on my auto insurance or if it would go in your thing so what do you think yeah when it comes to kayaks uh, the value is such that it's usually attached to some other policy so i mean if it's stolen out of your back of your truck your homeowner's policy called carries it if you're in an accident while it's in the back of the truck then you've got some coverage under your auto policy 
And to get coverage for a kayak in Mexico, I doubt we could do it just because the dollar value isn't there to, to, to support it. So the current insurance you have would cover that? Right to the, what right, about, right to the border. Right. <laughs> now, now, what about on the water? What? Um, again, you have to decide. It's a, a risk tolerance thing. Yeah. You know, you look at the price of, of kayaks and how much it would cost to actually try and cover it on the water. Your liability would probably be covered. Okay. From your that would be the most from your thing. either re- homeowners or renters, depending on okay. what you have, you might have some coverage there. But I would check because the policies could be di- well can vary from company to company. Yeah. But again, you're not. That's one of those things you have to kind of decide on how much kayak. risk you want to take exactly. on. You want to take on yourself with at the kayak. How much liability could I actually incur by? causing damage to somebody or somebody or something something now yeah. what about like your tackle could you just maybe get a separate you know rider or something on on just that stuff where maybe you take it on your boat but if you take you know take three or four outfits and you rank you know wrangle up three or four thousand dollars like that you know that maybe are normally on your boat but you decided to go paddle out to i mean you're you were that guy yeah you know? i mean I'm, you you were a guy who for sure would take your boat out one time maybe take your kayak out the other time yeah um Kayaks are a, a different animal. If you were to lose your tackle while on your kayak and you have a boat policy that covers tackle, you may be able to mm-hmm. extend your coverage across to there. But they're a different animal. Case it's, by each. Yeah, and it's, and it's a very different animal because it's such a low-risk type situation sure. from an insurance company standpoint. You know. Yeah. I think the chances of me dumpling my kayak over would be greater. That's what rod than, leashes are than, for, than buddy. You. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's what thought. rod leashes are for. <laughs> Smart man. That's so, a very wise $10 investment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you're a kayak fisherman, so that's yeah. your, it's yeah. basically yours is covered, yeah. so you know exactly yeah, your, and your and homeowner's policy. If it's, if it's stolen you know, and those type of things, something happens on the water, it, uh, that, that risk is pretty much on me. Yep. Okay, what if you're tied up, tied, do you have your kayak tied to your car? And you're driving down the highway, and a kayak flies off and hits somebody. You probably have coverage under your auto policy. Auto policy. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's so many. Pla- I mean, there's yeah, so sure. many I things mean, that are all you got to think of. <laughs> yeah, right? totally. Hey, Dennis, thanks a lot for the call and happy birthday yeah, to you. Yeah, it's cool. But yeah, for sure. All right. How about next up? We talked to Chuck. Chuck's calling us from Dana Point this morning. What's up, Chuck? Welcome to the show. Hey guys, no wind so far today. Man, let's yeah, get out of the water morning. after the show, huh? Hang tight, <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, that's insurance talking there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a question now. Like, I got a dinghy we go out and fish on, and now if I have insurance on that, does it cover me on the water to tow in, and how many miles out can I go, and does it cover my trailer all the way home? You know, if I break yeah, it, down, yeah, come get it. If you've got a policy that has boat and trailer coverage on it because it's a towable boat, then you've got that coverage on the water and how far out. Usually it's out to 25 miles, but again, that varies by company and, and how far they'll extend. I can get it extended so it'll go farther, but in a dinghy, you don't really probably need anything more than that. Um, but there are po- extensions you can get from 25 out to 60, out to 80, those types of things. Okay. Again, depending on which company offers what. And that's one of the nice things about coming to an independent agency like us. You know, farmers or a state farmer in all state, they only have one market. Yeah. I have multiple markets I can search and find the right fit for the right situation. So you go to a, a like a farmer's guy, he's going to buy, sell you a farmer's You get insurance. farmer's insurance. You, you, right? you farmer's go to policy. SNAP Insurance, you're going to have how many different policies? Um, I think in boat carriers right now, I think we have 14. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Just in boat carriers. That we can choose from. And some of those also include you know, carriers that do home and boat, okay. which can get you a pretty substantial discount a lot of times. I okay. mean, some carriers, it's up to 25% discount on your boat policy if you package home okay. and boat home together. And boat. Yeah. And like you say, those 14 might range from the super cheap inner tube, the guy that wants the least amount possible, to the going to Mexico and covering your gyros and everything else. Yep. Yeah. You, you mentioned a little bit trailer uh, on that one. What, uh, what kind of trailer things do you see get covered and maybe get overlooked by people that wouldn't think about something yeah, like that? Um, the cost of the trailer is usually the biggest thing. A lot okay. of times people will buy, especially when it comes to a used situation where they buy a boat and a trailer, they really haven't priced out the actual cost of the trailer itself. And to replace an older trailer with a brand new right. custom aluminum trailer, it, sometimes the, the coverage isn't enough okay. to, to be on the trailer. Mechanical breakdown type stuff. If you're not greasing the bearings and doing that, and, if, and, and 
that's not covered. Mm -hmm. But if you have damage to it from an accident or those types of things, then it is covered. And if it's the boat and the trailer are stolen, then you have coverage too. Or if okay. you cause an accident with the trailer or something. That goes like into your liability, yeah. That's but if the trailer hits something and does damage, that's yeah, where your sure. liability I mean, is. Coming around the lawn trap and not paying attention, clip something, whatever, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever scenarios exist. But the biggest problem I see with trailers is usually when somebody buys a used boat and, bet. and they don't understand what it's going to be to replace a trailer. Yeah, if you go out and shop a brand new killer Pacific galvanized trailer, it's not going to be an inexpensive ordeal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but keep those wheel bearings greased. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good advice yeah, for sure. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Let's talk for a minute about. Some of the stuff you do on the San Diego City Council, your job there, sure. and some of the issues that we're faced with today, because I know people are, are very, very conscious about it. So, um, City Lakes, I mean, you have been our guardian angel yeah, when it comes yeah. to trying to get these city lakes back open. Well, we, we got some of them open, which are the ones inside the city limits, but the, the ones that, and it's a weird situation, because the lakes that are actually out in the county are, are run by the city. But it's run by so like Hodges and Hodges, San Vicente, El, El Cap, Cap Otay, you know. But the problem is, it's r from an fisherman's standpoint, a recreational mm -hmm. standpoint. Those lakes are run by the Public Utilities Department. Mm -hmm. Their mission is to provide drinking water to San Diego. So what happens when in, you get into tough budget times like now is you go to the different departments and you say, "Hey, we need four percent cut in all the departments so we can try and balance the budget." Well, the public utilities department, who doesn't have any inkling yeah, about the recreational aspect. Their only job is to make sure there's drinking water. Their job is to make sure that the water is provided. So the first thing they do to cut is they cut the recreational services because that's not their core mission. What we really need in the long term is a either a third-party vendor, which I think is the best way to do to operate these lakes, um, or some kind of agreement with the county because the best all these lakes are in the county but and used primarily by county residents right. but the city has the responsibility yeah and i hate to say it um but the fees at those lakes haven't changed in over a decade well and that's the point raise the fees if if if, if fishermen if, have shown that you know if you can it, it, or charge for parking in places where yeah, parking right. is charge you know you you can find ways to offset it because we got the numbers the other day and to run the city lakes for a year on the recreational side about seven hundred thousand dollars it's not that oh much. so it's which is a drop in a bucket for the city right. that's to run all the lakes yeah the recreational that's, aspect of I, the I, recreational I, aspect. You know, certainly can't speak for you know certainly can't speak for everyone else but the little bit that i've seen you know social media you know whatever guys bitching isn't the right word but you know mm -hmm. what i mean upset yeah. oh, and, yeah. and rightfully so like it, it seems like a lot of their opinion is i don't have a problem paying an extra 10 bucks, I want my lake open. You know right. what I mean? Like it Would seems you pay 15 instead of five to go of fish course. El Capitan? Without, Absolutely. Without any question. Yeah. Without any and question, or, or I would. Or to not, or fish or not. Yeah. Do, do we pay for our visas to go across the... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, we we right. didn't used to have to do that, but okay, right. if it means fishing or not, that's, I'm going to have to do that. That's what I'm... Yeah. I mean, obviously, just like everybody, would you rather pay less than more? Sure. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I would I would rather pay more than not at all. You know what right. I mean? And, and as long as it's within reason, which you, you, you nailed it. I mean, the prices haven't changed in... A decade. Yeah, forever. And I don't... I just... Uh, I think if, the, if that were the option that were presented to the fishing public at large, hey... You know, we can either keep struggling with this and try to figure out, or we can make it X amount of dollars and we're back open next week. I don't. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a percentage of people that didn't want that. Yeah, and that's why I think we really should consider going to. And I'm trying to get the bureaucracy and sure to, and the unions to consider that. But a third party vendor actually makes them the most sense. Perfect. Um, my biggest concern is these lakes are going to stay shut down for a while, and then they're not going to open back up because of budget problems. Right. So we've got to figure out some way to address it to get it done. Because if you look at it right now, the funding to have those lakes open exists in the current budget because we're working on a pre-approved budget from before. But the new budget starts in a few weeks. I got gotcha. you. So I'm sure what they're thinking is, okay, we don't want to open up the lakes and then have to close them because of budget problems three weeks later. Yeah. But so, that's why if we have a third-party vendor dealing with it, then they can take care of it, and it's outside of our hands. Third it's party, outside of our budget. We don't have to worry about it. A third-party vendor then becomes the person responsible for getting people on and off the lake and running concessions and yep. providing staff they pay and things the city, like that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They, you put it out for a, what they call an RFP, which is request for proposals sure. to different vendors to say, okay, how yeah. much would you pay us to operate this lake yeah, and I, you can I will, make money on it doing it? I will run I will run these three lakes for you and you know I will 
I will pay you this amount of money to for that opportunity, and then I will charge X amount of money to recoup my loss. Exactly. And right. then now the city washes their hand, not wash their hand, but they're not financially responsible. That person takes the risk; they either succeed or they, or not. And, 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 and the, away you go. And the recreation isn't subject to the ups and downs of budget constraints. Budget city constraints budget. that sure. are from somewhere else. They're self sufficient; they can take care of themselves. Yeah. But yet the city's still operating the lakes. I mean, they, that they operate the water function, the water, but that's yeah. that that's their Which core function. The that's what they're main, supposed to do. Sure. The main thing. I yeah. couldn't agree. More. So, it makes so, sense to me. It, so, I, yeah, but I, in a in a bureaucracy <laughs> um, that we live in, uh, how long does something like that take? Um, and and and, and, the, and in the short term, can we get those I, lakes open? I've got 191 more days left in office, so hopefully, I can get done in 191 okay, days. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> The long-term solution part of it. I think in the short term, we may have a, a solution coming up here in the next week or so. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. I hope to so, get buddy. the lakes back open. We're, you've been working real hard with the county, talking to the different supervisors over there, trying to come up to an agreement how we could share things. Because, yeah, some city people use it, but the vast majority of people utilizing those lakes in the county are county residents. Yeah. Even, even Barrett. Yeah. They might, they're might. they considering Barrett, too. Yeah. we're. I'm trying to get it to where... We can get those things open for at least this year with the proper funding and maybe some type of an agreement or the city just does it because I've got several council members who put in their priority memo that they want the lakes open. So that usually makes them find money somewhere. Gotcha. Um, but in the long term, we need to find some type of an agreement that we are outside the constraints of government to where it can be other than having to have a contract with them have a third party vendor and then, then we're not subject to the ups and downs of city budgets. Cause if you look at with this COVID thing and the lack of income and the lack of tourism and all that, sure. the city is down about $350 million in revenue this quarter. Oof. Wow. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah it's a lot city. of paved streets and those types. Yeah, of things. You know for I mean? that's, sure. That's a lot. Yeah, no doubt. Well, if you want to get through eight, three, three, two, eight, eight, zero, nine, seven, three, a line open, talk to Dave and uh, get yourself in the line up there. Let's go down South down to Rancho Leonero. Talk to our buddy, John Ireland's on the line. Buenos dias, John. Good morning, Pete, Rick. Hello, Scott. Hi, John. How you doing, bud? <laughs> well, we're, uh, we're still waiting to open up here. You know, um, uh, Mexico's probably, I'd say two or three weeks behind, uh, California in the opening process. So just right now, in June, you know, we've got a lot of government inspections. We've got to be certified. The whole hotel is being sanitized. Um, two or three seminars for all the employees uh, to make sure that they, uh, they're they uh, providing good health care. And, and hopefully, you know, we're looking at the 15th. Um, 15th not sure okay. about that, but it's but it's looking pretty pretty good for the 15th. It's, uh, it's They're extremely strict down here in Mexico, extremely strict, I, I, much stricter than the United States. Um, and uh, they were a little slow reacting in the beginning, but uh, on the back end, they've been they've been all over it. Still, no cases on the East Cape, not one. Um, it's uh, it's the number of cases in Cabo is way down, and so is La Paz. So we're looking pretty good for Baja Sur compared to Baja Norte. So again, we're hoping up the 15th to work for us. Um, uh, we're going to let everybody know. Still, no po you know real notice from the government about positive dates of opening and all that. <clears throat> anyway, the fishing, of course, the fishing, we haven't had any, any real pressure since last November. So I've had seven months, you know, of very, very light fishing pressure, and, and it's shown in the fishing, very, very good fishing. Water is warmer than normal out in front. It's 80 degrees now, which is a uh, good five degrees warmer than normal for this time of year. Uh, around Saravo off of La Paz, it's up to 84 uh, water's cooling down towards San Jose del Cabo. It's down about 75 degrees. A um, lot of tuna, about 30 miles off of La Rivera, about 15 off of Pomo. Uh, 20, 25 pounders, limits for all the guys that are going out. Not many boats are going out, and it's all locals. It's all it's all Mexicans that are fishing now. Uh, they're picking them all up on Arn officials, uh, mostly cedar plugs, but everybody's whacking the tuna. As usual, a lot of striped marlin around off the front of La Rivera, but really, really thick the further south you get, I guess. I guess there's just gobs and gobs of them around. A lot of tailors and jumpers everywhere you look. Inside, uh, the rooster fish are interesting, you know. In, la in the last few years, they've been dri kind of driven off the shallow water off the beach and into the first uh, deeper drop-offs along the coast there. Uh, that's changed. They're, they're back in now because they're not 
they, they're not getting bothered. They're actually up again in real shallow water. You see them, half of the fish is out of the water, really broaching wow. and, and real, real close to shore. Really not a cool. bunch of fly fishermen chasing them up and down the beach. <laughs> <you mean>? no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that had to be a factor. You know, a, a fly fisherman every 100 yards all the way up and down the beach, and every time one shows up, they're all over them, and, and they were definitely driving them into the deep water. And that's not happening now, and there's loads around. Again, no pressure, a lot of bait around and all that, so it's pretty cool to see all the activity inside. Uh, again, very good fishing, and, and we're hoping to open up for everybody soon. You know, we're ready to go and, and chomping at the bit like everyone else. Man, think about getting in on that first wave of being down there and fishing like that. It's just got to be sweet, John. Well, I sure hope that, like you say, I sure hope that things continue to move in the direction they are, and by the 15th, you're up and rolling, and people get to take advantage of that good fishing. Yeah, thanks, Rick. And, you know, we've been real lucky, like I say, so far not one case. It's interesting in town, you know, uh, like Gary Barnes-Webb, his son Andrew, uh, my old manager Gary, uh, um, he he has an apartment at, at in, La, in Los Barillas, and he went to see his girlfriend in Cabo San Lucas, and they wouldn't let him back in town, so he's living over in Cabo now. They literally have roadblocks around all the pueblos, Santiago, uh, Miraflores, La Rivera, Los Barillas, and Buena Vista, and the only way you can get in and out is going through these uh, roadblocks into, into town, and if you've been to La Paz or Cabo, they absolutely won't let you in. They're, like I say, they're extremely strict. So how do you get in, John? I didn't. Uh, when I was, I didn't go to town. I stayed on oh, the I ranch. See. So yeah. you can get to the ranch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you know, the ranch is remote, and, and we have one entrance in and out. And, and the security now, we, uh, we don't let it, very many people in and out anymore at all. If, they're, if they are from Cabo workers or, or La Paz, we're, we're not letting them in either. So we're really trying to clamp it down. But, uh, yeah, I was down, and I wasn't allowed in Los Barrios at point of this, but so... It's it's strict, so we're hoping, and that's a good thing because uh, they've really tamped it down. They've really kept uh, there's yeah. not been one virus on our side. So and and are they able to separate um, north northern Baja and southern Baja? Is it two completely distinct regions? So they get, don't you don't get lumped into what's happening in Tijuana? Uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. They they tend to there are two states. You know, it's Baja Sur and Baja Norte, and they tend to lump them together and refer to it all as Baja. And Baja Sur is a completely different deal than Baja Norte. You know, there are a lot of cases in May, Cali, and Tijuana and along the border, and there are just not very many down by us. But if you look in the press, they just talk about Baja. They don't differentiate. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, because we, we're in a much better position, much safer than Baja Norte, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Now, sadly, we had to move our uh, Rancho Leonero, our, our 23rd annual Rancho Leonero spring tournament. Uh, we're actually going to run it concurrently with our Palma de Cortez Fall Spectacular, oh, October 8th through the 12th. Cool idea. Uh, so it's been moved, and we're going to have a little maybe a little competition I between the two, two hotels yeah. there too. So uh, that's going to be fun. Both sponsored by Statewide Stripes. Dave over there at Statewide Stripes is uh, given $500 to each hotel. So we'll have 500 bucks cash for um, so various fish. We haven't figured out the categories yet, but I think what we're going to do is divide it up into uh, 250 for a tuna and 250 for Wahoo and Dorado and uh, at each hotel. And so that'll be fun. So I know a lot of the people sure. that were booked for our trip uh, are, have already moved their dates. But if you want to join us in prime time October at Rancho Leonero, uh, yeah, time I'm to book now, right? Yeah, exactly. And I want to thank everybody because literally almost everyone in the tournament has re-signed up for October. And, yeah. and that's been across the board for our guests. I just can't thank everybody enough for changing their dates and moving and move, moving later on in the summer. Everybody wants to come down and go fishing, but it, it's really heartening for me to, to have such support from our guests and all that. And, and the, you know, the tournament's going to be fun because uh, now we'll compete against uh, Palmas. We'll have the Palmas team. We'll have the, we'll have the ranch team, and we'll see who uh, gets the biggest fish. A little more confidence. Yeah, so no, cool. that, that, that. that's going to be fun. And, and thanks to Eddie right. Dalmal over at Palmas de Cortez, too, for saying, yeah, let's do it. So yeah, they're, they're, everybody's support, working too. together down there. And, and the Van Warmers, you know, we, we I've been down there almost 40 years. And if it wasn't for Bob Sr., I really wouldn't be I wouldn't be here where I am or down there. And and so it's uh, real good cooperation amongst all the hotels down there. Everybody's really working together. And, it, you know, it's a small area, and every, everybody are friends and, and really working together. So we're looking forward to working together and get everything open and, 
and having our guests back down. And, and again, thanks. I want to thank all my guests again for all their support. Sure. All right. Well, well said. That's great, John. Absolutely. Well, if somebody wants to book a trip, it sounds like we're going to be opening up here in a couple of weeks. How do we get a hold of you? Thanks, Pedro. It's 800 646 2252 or ranchalandero.com. All right. Thanks, John. And we'll talk to you next Sunday. You sure will, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Thanks, John. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk hookup coming your way. More of your phone calls. We're going to check in with the catch report, find out what's biting up and down the beach, including a very special report from our friends over at Dana Wharf. You stay tuned. More Let's Talk hookup coming your way on the Let's Talk hookup app and radio network. When you want dependable service for your outboard, your first choice should be H&H Marine in Pacific Beach. Owner and mechanic Jeff Hughes found there was a real need for great outboard repair, and that's why he started H&H Marine. Jeff and his crew will service your motors at their convenient Garnett Avenue shop, in your boat slip, or at your home as a factory-authorized Yamaha service center. When Jeff takes the job, it's done right. He's worked on Pete and Rick's boats for years and comes highly recommended. H&H Marine is also your source for new Yamaha and Mercury outboards as well as original parts. Need a new bait tank? H&H Marine has you covered with top-of-the-line blue water bait tank sales and expert installation. In the market for a new boat? H&H Marine is a striper boat dealer with great prices on their full line of affordable fishing boats. So for outboard service when and where you want it, outboard sales, striper fishing boats, and bait tank systems, check out H&H Marine, 2680 Garnett Avenue in Pacific Beach on the web at hhmarineservice.com. Hey, it's time for the 30-second Power Pro Seminar. Here's the hot tip for those of us that like to fish with small reels for big fish. Fill your spools with Power Pro Max Quattro. It's 25% thinner than standard Power Pro. That means you're going to get more line on that small reel. Plus, you can fly line your bait more effectively. Here's another tip about Power Pro Max Quattro. Your casting distance will increase in addition to increasing your spool capacity. So downsize your tackle and use Power Pro Max Quattro. Check PowerPro.com for more information. Dana Lanning in Mission Bay is truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. This is Chelsea. Come see me and our expert fishing staff for just about anything you need for a great day of on-the-water fun. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Lanning has you covered with the blackjack, perfect for up to four anglers or the impulse with up to six. Dana Lanning has a huge selection with everything you need to catch small bay bass or giant tuna. We will be sure to set you up with the right gear. We even offer real repair and Mexican and California fishing licenses. Don't forget the amazing deli at Dana Lanning with all the food, ice, and beverages you need to complete your day. Need freshwater tackle? Head to East County Bait and Tackle with all the finest rods and reels, the hottest freshwater lures, and live bait. ECBT has an amazing staff who love to share their passion for fishing. East County Bait and Tackle is located at the end of the 67 freeway on Main Street and Lakeside. And Dana Landing is next to the Dana Launch Ramp on San Diego's Mission Bay. Check out danalanding.com for more details. This program is paid for by Let's Talk Hookup. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and radio network, man. Great times going on, good fishing, and as promised, it's time to find out what's biting out there. It is time for the Catch Report, which today is sponsored by the Fish Pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Bring your private boat caught fish to Fisherman's Processing and give it that treatment that it deserves. Drop off your fish between 8 and noon. You catch it, they'll process let the experts fillet and vacuum pack your fish into table-ready portions. And with Fish Pros the market, they're open and ready for business with fresh fish, smoked and jerkied fish, spices, rubs, smoked cheese, and that famous tuna burger. Check them out at their Liberty Station location or order online at fishermansprocessing.com. We got the man, Captain Brian Woolley's on the line. What's up, Woolley? Hey, good morning, guys. How's it going? It's going great. Great. We are Glad very... to have you back yeah. fishing. Jeez. Gosh, what, what a good... Good week, man. We had a, a great week up here. We're stoked to be back into the swing of things for sure. You know, it's, I'll tell you, it's a bit different with, uh, you know, very light passenger loads, masks, all the disinfection stuff and things that, that you know, we have to do to make, make it the machine go. But uh, we're certainly uh, all about playing along and, and making sure we can do our part. So for us here, you know, along the beach, you know, we more or less picked up where things kind of left off in March and got back into that rockfish program. You know, that, that fish had enough time not being fished. We, uh, you know, had very good fishing a few days this week with uh, some real nice mixed bags of rockfish on the three-quarter day trips. You know, with only 15 anglers on these trips this week, you know, a 10-fish limit was, wasn't was very hard to come by. So uh, we will be increasing capacities tomorrow 
uh, up to 25 on our half and three quarter day trips. So uh, it was 15 this last week. We're going to kick it up here a little bit to see uh, how that works out this next week. But uh, come prepared to fish that rockfish right now if you're coming out on a three quarter day trip with us. Uh, Colt sniper jigs, 10 ounce torpedo sinkers. Uh, just come prepared with that. The half day action for us this week was a little bit slow. You know, there was a combination of things. We had some wind a little bit. Uh, you know, yesterday, for example, a little windy. There was that big swell that pushed in on the beach. And there's, you know, with that intense red tide a couple weeks ago, things still, there's no red tide sign, but things still haven't really gotten back to where we would like it. Uh, water temps in that 65, 64 range, but things are still a little bit mixed up. So the half day fishing was a little bit harder. The, the fish caught on those trips coming off the sinker, some white fish, sand bass, things like that. The Fury, though, however, on his first trip yesterday, man, he, uh, he had some very good fishing over at San Clemente Island. You know, uh, 83 yellowtail was his final count over there for his anglers. Uh, surface iron, live bait, very good. The bass fishing was good over there, and he had 100 bass on top of that yellowtail. Jeez, nice what bonito. a trip. Yeah, 25 barracuda, like, just just what you would kind of want getting back into the swing of things. You know, he, he was super stoked. His passengers were stoked. So he's running with 20 passengers right now. All of his trips are, are full into, you know, a good part of June. But sometimes <laughs> people fall off. People can't make it for whatever reason. So call our office, check his availability. But, again, with the limited passenger loads, reservations are just a must do. you got to have a reservation. You know, showing up and thinking you're going to get on a boat just isn't going to happen right now. So, Please call, book online, do what you need to do to, to get those reservations. So that's kind of it from us. We're uh, looking forward to this next week to see how things go. But we'd love to have you guys out with us. If you want to hop on a trip, call our landing here, number 949-496-5794. Of course, you can check us out on the web here at uh, danwarf.com. We got our fingers crossed, too, that uh, you know, those guys both in L.A. County and down there in San Diego get the green light, too, to get the ball rolling there. So we're, we're hoping that. We get some good news for for those guys this week too. Good, good call, Willie, and so glad to hear a catch report, fishing, and fisher yeah. biting at Dana Wars Sport Fishing, man. Getting back to the way it should be, buddy. We sure appreciate that. Glad you guys had some some ups and some downs, and let's hope uh, the fish continue to bite and keep rolling for next week, man. Appreciate it very much, and we'll look forward to talking to you again next Sunday. All right, guys. Thanks for the time, and uh, we'll talk to you then. Thanks, Thanks. Willie. Appreciate That's that. Great. Wraps up our catch report today for now because we're waiting for Gundy Gun. Yeah, I'm sure we'll hear from the yeah. surf guru. But in the meantime, Gamakatsu, they set out to develop a hook that was light enough for your live bait to swim naturally, yet strong enough to handle that next trophy bluefin or yellowfin. The answer, the Gamakatsu Nautilus HD. The new Gamakatsu Nautilus Heavy Duty is available with a solid ring or as a standard hook. Get that Gamakatsu Nautilus and the Nautilus HD at selected tackle shops right now. It's a good call right now, too. As we see this, you know, and we'll, we'll see it much more once the sport boats start to really get rolling here. But what is happening, at least in the private boat world, is there is, you know, what what has happened in addition to this trophy bluefin that's around, there is some very good, big, big school size yellowfins. You know, yellowfin yeah. that are 25 to literally 40 pounds, 45 pounds even, yeah. that are available Sherm, locally. you've had those, right? Yeah. You've caught I've, those. Yeah, and they've been a couple of weeks and. In- Pretty much the same area, so it's been nice. That's the yeah. thing. And now there's some of those bait stops are starting to get mixed up, you know, where guys will get stopped in traditional ways, trolling a cedar plug, trolling a, you know, trolling a Rapala, getting a jig stop on yellowfin, having great bait fishing on, you know, 25 and 30 pound yellowfins, which is a really challenging fish on its end. And then in the middle of catching 30 pound yellowfins, hook 125 pound bluefin. I, I had something like that happen to me on Monday. Did uh, you really? <laughs> we, we were cruising along with the kite out. But we were seeing small marks. You know, I mean, there wasn't big wolf packs mm-hmm. coming through. So I said, let's pull on the kite, and I'll just brail some scoops out here, and we'll see what happens. And as soon as we started throwing out the bait, the yellow fin started boiling around us and hooked up on that 25, 30-pound class fish. Nice. And remember, I remember you talking about when you put on a certain bait, you know it's the right bait. Yeah, totally. I pinned this one bait on, and it was big, and it took off straight down and just as fast yeah, as it could we possibly go. Boys. go. I said, okay, this is going to get bit. <laughs> and I got bit by something that on the 30-pound test, I mean, after its initial 100-plus yard run, I mean, literally stalemated me for a good half an hour. I mean, I'd get 10 yards. They'd take 10 oh, yards, yeah. you know. Mm, big got, one. got it to where I, there was deep color, and line popped yeah. oh gosh but i mean it was a good 35 minutes of fighting this thing and 
it was there was no way in heck it, it was, was a one different of those animal. 25 <laughs> 30 pound <laughs> no. you know, yellowfin but that's why you need that nautilus yeah, hd that, that's, that's why, why hooks like that are so worthy because yeah. they're that is going to, when the sport boats really are able to put the, the light on that, like that story is going to play out, I think, a bunch this year. Because because the yellowfin are good. It's and a it's really May good quality. It's all my I know. It's we amazing. Are, and we have it's yellowfin. Amazing. We are on the books for a really good yeah. one. Yeah. This and is and be a so good year. encouraging to hear Brian Woolley talking about uh, the Fury going over to Clemente on an overnight trip. Yes. 20, I mean, the demand, obviously. People want to go fishing. They're willing to pay for the, the light load. They're willing to do it. So uh, come on. Yep. Let's go fishing. No doubt. Yeah. We're ready. Well, hey, speaking of ready, we got the man, the surf guru. He's ready. Gundy Gunderson. What's up, Gundy? Good morning. Hey, hey gentlemen. We got an early bloomer on the beach, too. Sand crabs, Corbina in May. We'll you know what that. I mean? We'll yeah, take that really all day. That's great news. <clears throat> I'll just jump right into it. You know, a terrific week of surf fishing. You know, the series of grunion runs are kind of really putting a lot of bait in the shallows, and the catch is diverse, halibut, white sea bass, calico bass, sand bass, shallow water rockfish, striped bass, yellowfin croaker, corbina, leopard shark, bat rays, all of that in the catch this week. Warming water temperature, of course, helps. The emergence of sand crabs also helps. Uh, hook line sinker in Santa Barbara reported very good halibut action along Galena and East Beach there, several legal fish to 30 inches. 28, they were telling me 29, a lot of fish in that, that class. Flash minnows, 4-inch grunion patterns, swim baits have been hot. The reef beach has also been very good, holding a mix of cow bass, sand bass, shallow water rockfish, white sea bass, and we saw a lot of white, we're, we're seeing a lot of white sea bass in the shallows too. Um, a 35-inch fish was taken up there on a flash minnow off campus points, kind of a reefy area. Uh, Wiley's is back open. Anglers fishing off Will Rogers there reported taking a mix of barred perch, elfin croaker, a few early season corbina, uh, several short to legal white sea bass also reported taking off Malibu beaches there. The guys are using swim baits for those uh, sea bass. Big fish in Teal Beach for excellent croaker fishing along Bolsa Chica and Huntington. Lugworms, bloodworms have been best. Good halibut action along Shoreline Drive there in Long Beach. Catch and tackle in Newport reported some big spot fin in the catch. Uh, a seven-pound slug was taken near the piers there on a blood worm. Um, boy, that's a nice fish. Hogan's uh, also reported a good bite on the reef beaches there in San Clemente and South Laguna. Lugworms, mussels, taking elfin croaker, perch, calico bat. And then uh, Pacific Coast and Oceanside, they're holding a halibut derby. 25-pound fish launched into the lead. Uh, this is Ooh. interesting. The wow. guy took the fish in San Diego Bay there, right near the Shelter Island Pier. You can register for the derby and then you can catch the fish anywhere and he caught it on a jig para now what the heck is a jig para maybe rock talk could help me with that a jig para <laughs> sounds yeah. sounds like an that italian is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i i think a jig para is like a it's a it's a jig that um was more common in freshwater and i believe it's a like a like a tail tailspin style yeah. you know style lure but um yeah that's freshwater, what I'm you know, real Real popular freshwater thing that you know is obviously crossed over and guys guys catching catching you know, catching with twenty five pound yeah. halibut yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> obviously it's built yeah built well I'm gonna have to do some research on that but that's a terrific catch and that's just the kind of fishing we have just like what you're seeing offshore we got warmer than usual water temperatures and uh, the fish are reacting gotta love it I'd man hey that. Gundy Gunnerson surf guru extraordinaire it's time to go surf fishing and. Uh, Gundy, we sure appreciate your report, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. I love doing it, Pete, in this time of year, man. It's, uh, you get fired up, don't you? Yeah, the best. It's no the kidding. best when things, are, uh, when things are starting to happen. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, Gundy. Talk to you next week. Hey, uh, wanna, you know, I want to mention uh, r real quick how good the bait is at Everingham Brothers Bait oh, Company. It's been amazing. It's been, they have been doing such an amazing job because they're getting quite a bit of demand from private boaters. There's yeah lines and stuff like that and they have just continued to just be unbelievably good we were out uh monday and we were out all day and maybe had two yeah that, that rolled so over nice. it same, was so same nice same with us and it's nice size too yeah. it's that back to that you know 
four to six inch, uh-huh. beautiful, good living, good yeah. hook bait size, Perfect and hook bait. and a bright green backs to them, which I really oh, like. Yeah. I, I love them when they kind of light up and, oh, and yeah. take off from the boat. You know? Speaking my language, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Cookup coming away, including another full hours of your phone calls. Phones are packed up. Everybody's excited to talk to Sherm. You stay tuned. More Let's Talk Cookup coming your way on the Let's Talk Cookup app and radio. Hi there. I'm Hayden from Fast Lane Sailing and Kayaking, Southern California's go-to spot for Hobie fishing kayaks right on the water in Mission Bay. Let me tell you, we have big things going on in the shop this time of year. This November marks the 40th year anniversary of Fast Lane Sailing and Kayaking. And as a family-owned and operated business, my family and I would like to thank all of our friends and customers for the support over the decades. We also have the brand new 2020 model year Hobie fishing kayaks, introducing new features like the automatically retracting kick-up fins, as well as the revolutionary new Mirage Drive 360, which allows you to rotate and steer your Mirage Drive 360 degrees, giving you 100% control over your fishing kayak. Hobie's also released a new line of more economic options, like the new Mirage Passport 10.5 and 12.0, coming in at only $13.99 and $15.99 respectively, while still including the Hobie Mirage Drive with comfortable raised seats and tons of fishing features. Get down to our shop, Fast Lane Sailing and Kayaking, right on the water in Mission Bay, and see it all for yourself. Or check us out online at fastlanekayaking.com. There are plenty of boat slips and marinas in San Diego, but there is only one Kona Kai. It's not just a place to park your boat. It's a way of life here in America's finest city. Come check out what's new at the Kona Kai. 170 luxury guest rooms, including 41 brand new suites featuring contemporary island-inspired decor, deep soaking tubs, and oversized balconies. The Kona Kai Resort Spa and Marina has multiple swimming pools and a private beach, waterfront restaurants, and an award-winning spa, most of which is included for marina tenants add the kona kai club to your membership and you have access to the new paloma pool bar a new and exclusive pool area for adults only which allows guests to enjoy poolside craft cocktails in california coastal cuisine while overlooking your boat in addition to all this kona kai is the closest marina to the open ocean check resort kona kai.com on the web for more information to reserve a slip or inquire about joining the club the kona kai resort much more than just a place to park your boat We all need to get around, but we all need something different from our vehicles. Your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered if you're looking for a new truck this month. Plus, it's SUV season, so they have great deals for everyone. Whether it's a new Echo Sport that is nimble and fun around town, or the Ford Explorer that is capable of putting a boat in the water and has seating for seven, Ford has you covered. Ford trucks and SUVs aren't just powerful and legendary. They have the latest technology that helps you seamlessly connect your smartphone and ensure you're safe on the road. Features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on trucks are truly a game changer at the ramp, helping you back up a trailer by simply turning a knob on the dash and doing the hard work for you. So check out all the great deals during SUV season and save some money on the right gear for you. Learn more at buyfordnow.com or visit your San Diego County Ford dealers today, they'll be glad to hook you up. Shimano has done it again. An amazing lever drag two speed reel and an affordable price. It's Speedmaster 2, the extremely durable, high performance Speedmaster 2 with high maximum drag power and a smooth, ultra wide range of drag adjustability is an absolute fish fighting machine. Its rigid hoggedy body prevents misalignment of moving parts under the heaviest loads. Plus a spare drag cam is included for optimal use with monofilament lines. The Speedmaster is now available in four models, 12, 16, 20 and 25. This is the perfect reel for the angler looking for a powerful, lightweight, smooth casting reel for tuna or other powerful saltwater game fish at more affordable price. Nothing in its class can match the Shimano Speedmaster 2, built to provide high-end performance and durability in a compact, lightweight frame. Get the Shimano Speedmaster 2 lever drag reel at your local Shimano dealer. Check Shimano.com for all the details. 